Hello everyone and welcome to the first part of the series on creating an IoT application on SAP HANA Cloud Platform. Over the course of this video series, we will be looking into how we can create an end-to-end -end IoT application on SAP's Cloud Platform. We will start by creating a trial HCP account and look at its various features. Then we will be using the HCP IoT service to model our real-world devices and the message information we plan to send. And finally, we will be using the IoT MMS service to simulate sending of messages and visualize them in IoT tables. Alright, so let's get started. Now you can open your browser and search for HANA trial account. The first link that comes up uh, would take you to SAP HANA Cloud Platform. So one thing that you would notice here is that we are using a trial account. This trial account is completely free of charge and it lets you play around with most of the features of SAP HANA Cloud Platform. However, in case you are planning to develop a productive application, I would suggest to go to account.hana.ondemand.com instead of HANA trial. For our exercise, we would be continuing with the trial account as we don't require any special features. So, now you can click on register and register yourself. This would open a simple registration form where you would need to provide your details and click on register. Once you've done that, uh, you would get a confirmation email on your email account where you would need to confirm and come back to this page. So then uh, you can click on login and log in by providing your email and the password. Once you've logged in, you will be taken to your HANA Cloud Platform cockpit. Your dashboard would look something like this. Uh, it gives you a quick overview of all the applications running in your account. And below you can find some of your account information along with the list of subscriptions that you have. So by default, uh, we have one subscription and that is to SAP Web IDE. Now this is a web editor for developing HTML5 based applications or UI5 based applications. We'll be looking into this in some other session. For now, uh, let's create a HANA instance. So on the left list, click on HANA instance and then click on new trial instance. For my instance, uh, I will give the name as trial HANA. You can give any name as you like. Click on save and this would create a instance of SAP HANA on the shared cloud account. Now we can use various development tools to develop with SAP HANA. One of them is SAP HANA web based development workbench. And we will be learning about it in our next session where we see how we can create a HANA application. Apart from this on the left side you get the various navigation items on the HCP cockpit that take you to different applications or different services on the HANA cloud platform. If you click on database and schema, you will see one trial HANA schema already created. And this is because we created a HANA instance for us. You can also create HTML5 based applications, which could be your UI5 applications. Apart from this, we have various features like managing the trust and the authorization level in this cloud account or other account resources. Now click on services. This would open a list of all services on your HANA cloud platform. Some of these services would be enabled and others would not be. And SAP HANA cloud platform provides you a lot of services that you can work around with. For this video, we will be using one such service, which is the internet of things service. Click on this. The detail screen would give you a brief description of the service and also provide you an option to enable the service. Now click on the enable button. Once your request is processed, the service would be enabled for use in this cloud account. There are additional links that take you to the documentation for the service and also let you configure the service. For now, just go to the service. 
Clicking on this would open a new window where you would need to provide your authentication again. So provide your password here and click on continue. On a successful authentication, you would be taken to your Internet of Things service cockpit. This IoT cockpit is something we will be focusing on in this session. It has various styles that let you perform different tasks. First of all, uh, we will be deploying our message management service. For this, you would need to authenticate yourself on this cloud account again. So give your authentication details and click on OK. Once the MMS service is deployed, you should get a success message. Now you can configure your MMS service by clicking on this link. Clicking on it would open a new window and open your HANA Cloud platform with the service details. So till the time our application starts, let us configure the role and access to it. Click on roles in the left navigation. By default, you would see one role, which is the IoT MMS user. We need to assign this role to our user. So provide your user ID here. It should be your account name minus the trial suffix. So for me, it is P1941741844. Clicking on assign would grant you the access to this application. Now we need to configure the authentication. So go to the left navigation, click on custom. Here in the form section, enable username and password and click on save. We need to go back to the overview section now. And for our changes to reflect, we need to restart our application. So click on stop and then start the application again. So once the application restarts, we will be able to use it from the below application URL link. But before that, we need to configure some additional things. So let's go back to our account homepage and then go to database and schemas. Over here, you will see two schemas now. One is the trial HANA, which we originally saw. And the second one is for IoT MMS application. What we want to do is delete the IoT MMS application from the schema. So remove the binding by delete. And then go to your trial HANA and add the new binding for IoT MMS application. What this really does is it tells the IoT MMS application that all the new entities that we create from this app should reside in the trial HANA instance. Now this is really important so that we can use these entities going ahead and create an application on top of it. Now you can go back to your IoT cockpit and refresh it just to be sure. Now we'll be creating different entities that model our IoT database. The first one would be device types. So you can have any kind of devices. What I'll be choosing is Raspberry Pi. So type Raspberry Pi and click on create. This would create an entity device type of name Raspberry Pi. Along with this, there are some additional things like an ID generated and a device registration token. Next thing would be creating the messages for this device. Now this message would be the information that we send across from our IoT device. So you can choose the direction whether it is coming from the device or whether it will be going to the device. So just give a name to your message. Let's say message from device. So by this we are saying that we will be sending a message from this device and the data that we'll be sending would be in the field section. So let's say we have a sensor and we are sending a sensor value, sensor one, and the 
type of this value would be a string. Now you can have any details that you'll be sending across from your device. This could be your temperature values or any sensor readings. So I'll have another reading which could be my sensor 2 and keep it as string. And along with this I'll send a timestamp which would be of the format date. Once you have specified the metadata for this message, click on create. This would create an entity message type with the specified details. In the fields we can see we have three fields, sensor1, sensor2 and timestamp with the respective types. In case we want to create additional message types, we can create that. So let's create a message to device. The direction would be to device. So this would be sort of a push message sent to your device. Now you can have any information that you plan to send to this device. Could be some sort of a configuration. So let's add a field configuration one of type string. and a timestamp of type date. Then you can click on create. This would create a new message type for us that we can use for push messages. If you compare the direction you would see a difference there from the earlier message. Along with this there is an ID generated for each message type that we will be using in some time. The next entity that we create would be our actual devices which we use to send our sensor information. So let's create one. Now for me it would be of the type Raspberry Pi. I'll give it a name Raspberry Pi 1. Click on create. On creating you get an authentication token. You can copy this and save it for reference later. This would be required for authentication when we send data from our device. Now let's say we have another Raspberry Pi board. We create another device, Raspberry Pi 2. So you can create any number of devices for the same device type. In our case, we have two devices of type Raspberry Pi. Let's go back now. So what we did is we created a device type Raspberry Pi. And for that device, we created some message information that we'll be sending from the device and to the device. And for that device type, we also created two actual device instances. Now we need to deploy the message management service again. So you can provide your credentials and click on deploy. This would redeploy the message management service along with all the entities that we created in the previous steps. The next step would be to open the message management service. To open it, click on the view messages type. This would open the MMS cockpit in a new tab. The message management service is responsible for all the messages we send to or receive from our device. You can get a quick overview of the messages by clicking on the first type. It will display all the stored messages in the system. By default we have two tables. One is a configuration table and another is monitoring table. These are some internal tables used by the IoT service. Then you have an option to push messages to your device. Here the message type with the direction to device are used and you can specify which device you want to send the information to and the message you have. A brief documentation about this can be seen from this page itself. So you can see what is the syntax you need to follow in order to push a message to your device. The MMS cockpit also provides us a feature which we can use to simulate sending of messages from our device. This can be done over HTTP or via using web sockets. Let's start with HTTP and post the default information that we see. When you click on post, you should see a 200 reply from the server, which means that the message was successfully posted. Now what happened here is that you specified that on your cloud account, 
you, you want to use the IoT MMS service and push a data to this device. By default, each account has this default device along with this message information. So we can post some more values. Let's say sensor value to sensor 55. Now let's go back and have a look at the messages we sent. Click on display stored message and refresh it. You should see one more table appearing now and this would contain the sensor values that we sent in the previous step. So you see a sensor value of sensor 1 and sensor 55 along with the timestamp and other details. Now let's send the messages for the devices we created in our IoT cockpit. So in the HTTP endpoint, change this device ID. For this, you should go back to your MMS cockpit and get the device ID for your device. Just copy it and paste it over here. In the message to post, you would need to change the message type so you should get it in your device type. Go to message type. We will be sending the message from device. So you can copy this ID and put it here. Now the sensor information that we will be sending is a bit different. So this would replicate your fields. So we have three things. Sensor 1, sensor 2 and timestamp. So let's say sensor 1 here. Now this would be in the form of a JSON. So in case you are not familiar with it, I would suggest that you read about it over the internet. Now let's send some sensor values. I'll give some dummy values here. So sensor 1 and 2 are of the type string. I'm giving a value here. And timestamp is of type date. To get the current date in the required format, I'll use a website timestamp generator. This would give you the date in all the formats. What we need is the ISO 8601 format. You can copy the date from here and go back and paste it in the message. You can click on post now. So if we have correct JSON, we should get a 200 reply from the server, which means that our message was successfully posted. Now let's put some additional messages by changing the sensor values. I've changed sensor 1, sensor 2 and I'll slightly change the timestamp also. Click on post so I get another 200. Let's go back and look at the messages we created. You can refresh this page and you should see a new table appearing now. If you look closely at this table, this resembles a lot like the message type we configured in IoT cockpit. This contains some device information, which is the device ID and an auto generated timestamp at which this entry was made and the field values that we configured. So it has two entries for sensor one, sensor two and timestamp. So now we have two IoT tables that we can use in our HANA development workbench for creating our IoT applications. And we'll look at how to do that in our next session. So in this session, we created a HANA trial account. We configured and used the IoT services to model our IoT database. And then we used the MMS service to send some message values and simulate our IoT devices. In the next session, we look at how to create a UI5 and HANA application on top of our IoT database. Thank you for watching this.